got eight hives on our property, six of which we're gonna pull supers of honey off of and extract. So we figured we'd show you a little bit of that process from start to finish. So how this works is, on this hive, for example, we have two supers with eight frames in them that have capped honey uh, on all of the frames. But there's bees all over this, and we need to get the bees off of those frames. So what we do is put these escape screens in. It has a hole in it here, screen on the bottom with this triangular shape. And amazingly, the bees will move naturally off of here, down, out these corners of the frames, and they can't really figure out to get back in there. And it will mostly work. Not 100%, you're not going to get all the bees off, but you'll get a lot of them off. And then we put two new supers with clean frames of foundation for the bees once they move down. They need a place to go. So we gave them 16 new frames down here to move off of. It takes about two days, or they say about 24 hours per super. So since we had two of them, we gave them 48 hours to move down here. Now once we take the, the supers off, there will be some bees left. So we use a leaf blower to try and gently blow as many of the bees off of the frames as possible. And then we move them into Tupperware containers to move into the house. Because inevitably when we pull the frames out, there's some comb that's drawn out across and we're going to pull it apart and there'll be honey dripping. So the easiest way we found is to take the frames and put them into some inexpensive clear uh, storage containers uh, in order to move them into the house for processing. We also take the opportunity to clean off those supers. Any, uh, any wax that's on the side, we actually scrape that into the containers, the, the, the Rubbermaid containers that we're going to take into the house. And then any uh, propolis or anything else that's on there, we just clean all that up so that when we come back in the afternoon, we've got clean supers to put the frames back in and put back on to the hive. The process reverses in the afternoon. So we'll take these supers that the bees are on, these frames of foundation, and hopefully they've started drawing out some comb on them. And we'll flip those above the escape screen and then put these supers that now have the empty frames that have drawn out comb and honey still on them. We'll move those back down so the bees will naturally move back down here, start cleaning up the honey, whatever honey is left on those frames, and start storing it back in and rebuilding and hopefully refilling all of those, uh, those frames. So for uncapping process that we're doing, well, we're doing it in our living room and put down a bunch of cardboard. We, instead of getting one of those large bins, about 150 bucks, we just got a food grade five gallon bucket at Lowe's, one of these strainer nets to put over and on the inside of it. We did get this comb capper, this yellow plastic piece that sits, it's made to sit on top of a five gallon bucket and actually has a, groove around the underside of it, as you can see, that sits on here perfectly. And then it has holes in here to put the frames in, so that's pretty pretty nice. And then we're just using a cold, cold knife for uncapping. And we did not go for, so this was $19. We didn't get uh, the heated one because this one seems to be working quite well. And then it's just a matter of cutting down on this and this goes down into the, the cappings and a lot of the honey that we're cutting off is going down into the bucket, but then it's easy enough to pull this up and just strain and squeeze. Well, I shouldn't say easy. It takes a little bit of work to squeeze that out of there, but you end up with a fair amount more honey down in, in the bucket. And any of them that are not opened up when we cut them, just rip either scratch across the top or stick it in and pry the cappings off of the, the top of it. So we'll do this side real quick. And then take this and just go in here and scrape these out. So that's it. We do scrape off taking a hive tool and just scraping off the wax and comb. There's some comb that they drew out on the tops and bottoms. Clean that up so that it'll actually go into the extractor fairly easily.
as you can see, <laughs> extracting the honey is probably the easiest part of the whole process. So once you've got a, the, the cappings removed off of the frames and you put the frames into the extractor, it's really a matter of simply turning it on and the machine does the work. The honey will start to flow. As you can see, we ran it through a 600 micron plastic strainer on top of a bucket and say between four and 600 microns is good for raw strained honey that you're not straining out any of the pollen or any of the good things you want in the honey. I wouldn't go any smaller than that because the honey is not going to flow through and it's going to get clogged up. But the way we did this is that we would load six frames in the extractor run it until the the flow of honey was down to a trickle coming out of the extractor and then take the bucket and while we were uncapping the next six frames we would uh, put take the honey out of the bucket and put it in to bottles in terms of numbers we pulled 57 frames off of six hives most of those frames were fully drawn out and 100% capped. A few frames were drawn out not quite as deeply for some reason. The bees had only drawn out maybe half the depth that they could and then capped them. And in some other cases, they didn't draw out the whole sheet. You had more of a natural shape to it where they had drawn out uh, but fully capped it. And then there were a handful of frames where say 90% of the frame was capped and 10% or less was uncapped. But when you kind of do a shake test on it, uh, honey did not come out. So we got 190 plus pounds of light amber to extra light amber honey, which is, and it, it, all of it's wonderful. And that averages to about three and a half pounds of honey per frame, roughly. I want to talk about the honey extractor. There's a lot of them on the market, but we went with a Maxent 3100P. It's a nine frame extractor. We are not being compensated for this. Definitely we paid for this. In fact, it was our 25th wedding anniversary gift to each other, silver anniversary, silver extractor. Really worked great for us. Very simple, easy to use, American made, appreciate that. When we ordered it, it said it could take up to a couple of weeks to get it, but we got this in, I think, two days. Uh, everything was assembled except for the legs. Those come as a separate packet and they are easy enough to just bolt on. I will say this, uh, it has holes down in the feet where obviously you could bolt the extractor down and that would make things quite a bit smoother because when you load frames in here, inevitably the frames are not all balanced the same. They're not the same weight. So when this starts spinning, it's gonna wobble some. That was easy enough to manage by just, if you went up to it, I mean, if it was really bad to just stand on the feet. One thing I would say is, is that depending on where you're doing this, we were doing it in our living room uh, on a hardwood floor. So having cardboard underneath it was important because if you didn't, and this was moving around as much as it, as it was, it would certainly wear on the finish on the floor. One thing I want to talk about is hand crank versus motorized extractor. Maxon sells this both ways and you can get a hand crank upgrade later to motorized as I think a number of companies do the same thing. For us, getting a motorized extractor was well worth the few extra hundred dollars. Uh, it, it just, it takes a long time for this to, for the honey to come out of the frames once you get it going. And anyway, so we did, you know, 57 frames, we're doing six at a time. It was, it was a long time uh, running the extractor to get all of the honey out. And to do that by hand would have been a bit fatiguing. A word about cleanup. It took about an hour to get all of the equipment cleaned back up and ready to be stored. And really everything, all it took was just hot soapy water. The extractor itself, uh, again, just set the bucket, a bucket underneath the, the gate. It's just a matter of pouring warm soapy water into the extractor and down the sides, taking a rag and just rinsing everything down and pouring it back out and continuing to do that so you don't have any soapy residue. It really cleans easier than, than you might imagine. We did not take the motor off, although you could. It's easy enough to take these two bolts off, lift the whole assembly up, and the racking system back up. 
And there is a stainless steel ball in the bottom of the extractor, which occasionally you're gonna have to, or over time, repack with a food grade grease on that ball. It's sitting in a socket with a ball and then the stainless steel rod going down on top of it is sitting on that in order to spin freely. But cleanup was really quite easy uh, with all of the equipment from the strainer, the buckets, everything else. About an hour start to finish to get everything done. The last part of the process is rendering wax. The biggest piece of advice I could give you if you're planning on making beeswax or rendering beeswax from the cappings and wax you scrape off the frames is to have dedicated equipment because rendering wax is messy. You will not get all of the wax back off of the equipment. So strainers, buckets, crock pots, pots, pans, anything that you're gonna use I would get things dedicated for this process. So it might be as easy as going to a thrift store or Goodwill and picking up some old pots and pans or something cheap, inexpensive that you can do this with and just let them be kind of messy from each time you do a honey processing or extraction. The way we did the wax rendering was to take the mass of wax cappings and other bits mixed with the honey and put it into a stainless steel bowl to begin the process of separation. We took the stainless steel bowl, put it in the oven at 300 degrees, melted it, let it cool, and lifted off a sheet of already relatively clean wax. Melted the wax again with water, poured it into a five gallon bucket with cool water at the bottom through a towel, disposable towel and strainer, poured boiling water over the top of it and we're left with pretty clean wax in the bucket. Took that wax, broke it up, put it into an old cookie tin, melted it down and then poured it into Tupperware containers and ended up with about four and a half pounds of pretty much pure beeswax. From the beginning, pulling frames off of the hives, to the end, cleaning up after rendering wax, the whole process took us about 14 hours. It was 12 hours just for the honey extracting, an hour for cleanup, and then about an hour for doing total for the, the wax rendering. Obviously, there's time there where you're letting the wax cool. It takes a little bit longer, but the actual hands-on working time was about an hour to render wax. The end result is, as I said earlier, 190 pounds plus of honey off of 57 frames, medium frames, and four and a half pounds of rendered beeswax. And we've got everything back to normal now. We've taken off the supers that we had added for the bees to move, flipped everything around, got those off. Two things I wanted to add at the end. Uh, one, if you go out and underneath the hive, you see uh, what looks like snow. That is all the little bits of wax from the scraping on those the frames where they've gone in and cleaned up that wax, and a lot of it is just going to fall down uh, under out of the the screen at the bottom of the hive. The second thing is be mindful about robbing or creating a robbing situation in this case. When you've got that much open frame and honey, if you have a particularly weak hive, just be mindful of it. I hope this video was helpful. If you're a, a new beekeeper and you're getting ready to extract honey for the first time and you wondered about this process, hopefully this helps to see it all the way from the beginning to the very end and kind of include all the steps that are there. Till the next video from here at St. Isidore's Farm, take care and God bless.